Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and this is the first video in a series that's going to walk you through setting up a WooCommerce site with Oxygen and Oxygen's WooCommerce integration. So this is what we're going to shoot for in this video is we've got our main template with our header set up already, and we're going to design a shop page that looks something like this with all of our different products listed for the user to view. So let's jump into the dashboard and I've already set up my products and I've already set up my oxygen main template. So now all we need to do is go into oxygen templates and we need to create a template that will apply to the shop page. So click add template and then we'll call this shop archive. Now, the WooCommerce shop page is in fact a product archive and product is a custom post type. So we'll need to make sure to go to archive under where does this template apply and choose post types. And then in the field, let's make sure we choose the product custom post type. Just to cover our bases, we can also choose the product variation. And under taxonomies, there's a few WooCommerce taxonomies we probably should grab, though it's usually not necessary for most basic WooCommerce setup. So we have product type, all tags, and then we're going to go down to uh, all tags for product visibility. Why not? And then we'll go down and do all product categories. And then we will do, I think there's one last one we need, uh, product tags. Okay. So that should cover all of our products in WooCommerce. So if we view a an archive for a specific product tag or category, then it will use this template. So we want to make sure that this template also inherits from the main one. So under inherit design from other template, we're going to choose main so that we get our header and footer. Okay, so the template is set up. So let's publish it. And now we just need to go in and edit with oxygen. All right, so first we're gonna set up a section to contain everything on our shop page. So let's click plus add and type section into the search and then click section to drop it in. Now I want this section to have a pattern background. So let's go to advanced background and we're gonna hit browse on background image and I have a pattern uploaded here. This is from subtlepatterns.com which actually has a ton of great patterns that I use all the time. Let's pull that up real quick. Just give them a shout out. So these are, these are really cool. Some of them are not really super usable without looking a little cheesy but some of them are actually really subtle and can be used in a, uh, a nice way to add some visual interest to your site and they've got a ton of them there's there's many many pages of these okay so we've got our pattern from subtle patterns it's way too big so we need to make sure the background size is set to auto that looks good and then by default it's going to repeat the pattern but if it for some reason looks like this you just need to select repeat under background repeat now it's a little too bold i don't want it to distract from the content that's on top of it so i'm going to choose an image overlay color here in the properties pane and we'll use this global white ish color that i have set up it's actually a mint cream it's got a little bit of a green saturation to it uh, but we'll set it to a little bit of opacity here we'll set it to like 0.8 yeah we want it slightly transparent uh, so there, yeah, so that makes it much more subtle in the background. It still adds some visual interest, but it doesn't distract, and that's the key. So next, we need our big headline. So we're going to add a heading, and let's click that. And this is going to be pretty big, but I don't know how big I want it until I know how much text I'm going to have in it. So let's do check out our awesome ice cream. Perfect. And let's go ahead and adjust the font size. I want it pretty big. Let's do 60 pixels. Perfect. And then we're going to actually change the color. I want to I want to use this red because it really makes it stand out and it does somewhat match the color scheme, which by the way, <laughs> I got from coolers.co. So let me pull that up. This is really, really another awesome resource to uh, to get color palettes to start with. 
for designing sites. And they use some kind of algorithm to make sure the colors all mostly go together. Um, you can generate your own. We can actually just hit the space bar and it generates a new palette every time we hit the space bar. And then these, you can just click them, copy those right into Oxygen. You can also explore other palettes that uh, people have created. You can um, look at you know, top picks and then the best palettes on the whole system, which is pretty cool. And I think I pulled this palette from one of the best palettes. So there's another resource to help you in your design endeavors. So let's go back to Oxygen and we've got our red color, perfect. Now, what I really want here is I want a, a divider line underneath this heading and before the kind of subheading that I'm gonna add. And in Oxygen, if you've ever tried this, you might have gotten a little lost because if we say add a div, that divs 80 pixels by 80 pixels. And the reason that is is that Oxygen forces empty divs to be that size so that you can drag elements into them and still manipulate the div. That can be overridden in a custom style sheet, but we're not going to do that here. We're actually just going to go in and go to Advanced Size and Spacing, and we'll set the width to 50%. And I just changed the pixel unit to percent by clicking the blue pixel unit and choosing percent. And then we'll set the height to two pixels, right? And we won't see that in the builder just because of that forced uh, 80 pixel height. Um, but we are going to see that on the front end. So let's go in and set the background color to this same red. Perfect. And we're actually going to let's select the section and let's just center everything. And then below that, we're gonna add a subheading. So let's add a text element. And then let's just type something about our ice cream. Our ice cream is hand packed in insulated boxes and delivered by the most talented ice cream delivery team ever. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our subtext subheading here. So let's just adjust the font size a bit maybe a little small let's do like i don't know that's too big let's do 18. okay and then i'm going to use this kind of a dark green color here for that and then uh let's add another little text section but we're gonna style this one up a bit we're gonna say now on to the good stuff but we're going to select the good stuff and we're going to put that in a span because we want to style that kind of individually. Um, so we have the span selected here. Let's grab the structure pane and yes, we have the span selected. We're going to go to advanced size and spacing and add like five pixels top and bottom padding, 15 pixels left and right. That adds some spacing around that text that we're going to emphasize. Then uh, next, we're gonna need some margin. So let's add like five pixels on the left. Now let's go to advanced background and we're gonna choose this dark green color and then advanced typography. We're gonna choose this yellow color. And then let's see, let's make this a little heavier. Let's go to like 600, perfect. And then let's go to advanced borders, and this is all with the span selected, and we'll set the border radius to five pixels. Perfect. So that gives us a little bit of a visually interesting thing going on with our text there. Now let's sort out our spacing. So let's select this heading and go to advanced typography and make sure the line height is something reasonable like 1.2. And then for margin, let's do like 15 pixels maybe. Uh, and then below this div, we'll do 15 pixels of margin. And then for these two text items, we will also do 15 pixels. All right, so let's save that and jump into the front end so we can really see what's going on here. Make sure our spacing looks okay. Yeah, that looks good. So that's a nice little heading for our shop page. Now, the real magic happens because we get to add our actual uh, item list to this uh, template. So let's go to add and under the WooCommerce category, we're gonna look for products list. Awesome, so now we just need to style this thing up and make it look the way we want it to for our shop, which is super easy with Oxygen's WooCommerce integration. So first, I don't want this shop 
title here because I've already got a title up here. Somebody got here by clicking shop. Probably they know where they're at. There's a product list. It's a shop. They know. So let's go to heading in the properties pane with the products list selected. And we're going to set the font size to zero. That'll make it disappear for us. Um, you also could set the color to a transparent color, but then you'd still have the spacing from the title, which I don't want in this case, because I'm going to add my own margin here and I'm going to do like 60 pixels of margin. Perfect. Now let's go through and do our styling. So let's choose, uh, let's go back to the products list properties pane here, and we're going to go to layout and we're going to make sure everything's centered as far as the, uh, product name and price is concerned. Um, and then for columns, we can go, you know, five, four, three. I think for this, we do two because we don't have a lot of products, you know, and you don't want a bunch of small images necessarily. If you only have a few products, we want them to be very bold and pronounced. Um, let's also go back and let's look at the images and let's set the borders to something like five pixels of border radius. That'll match our little rounded badge up here. And then let's go in and add a box shadow. So we're gonna choose uh, a dark color, but we're gonna make it pretty transparent. Though I find that using very, very transparent box shadows on grayish backgrounds tends to make things look a little muddy. So sometimes you want them a little darker. So we're gonna go zero horizontal offset, zero vertical offset, shadow blur, 15, spread, negative five. And see, sometimes, like I said, that makes it a little bit kind of muddy on the edges. So let's darken this up a bit, and then we'll reduce the spread even more. So let's go to negative 10. And that'll give us a, a very subtle effect. We don't want our box shadows to um, steal the show. We just want them to accentuate these elements and make them pop off the page a little bit. So let's save that and let's jump over to the front end and refresh. And here we have our products listed. Now we're going to want to style this even more. So let's jump back over to the oxygen builder and go back to our styling options here in the properties pane for the products list. And we could go in and adjust these buttons because I, you know, this doesn't match our design at all. But instead of doing that and adjusting the buttons for just the products list element, since we know we're gonna build an entire WooCommerce store in uh, future videos, we're gonna wanna make sure that we use the WooCommerce global styles. So let's go to manage settings, global styles and WooCommerce. And here is where a really wonderful thing happens and it follows the way oxygen has always worked is, you know, we don't want you to have to do a lot of repetitive work when designing a site. So the global styles apply to everything WooCommerce, not just the products list element. So by actually adjusting as many styles as you can in the global styles, you're really saving yourself a ton of work down the road. So in this case, we want our buttons to be different. So let's go to buttons here and let's look. I think these, it looks like they're classified as a secondary CTA. Yes, they are. So we want to change the color of these. So let's choose uh, one of the colors from our global colors. Maybe that, that might look good. That'll be nice and bold. And then on hover, let's choose, uh, I wanna say this mint cream color, but I think that might not work. Um, we can change the text color to make it work, but I don't like that. I don't think that looks very good. So let's change the hover color and do just maybe a slightly darker red. Yeah, that, that looks a little bit better. And then let's change this color to white, yeah, perfect. So now, like that, all of the buttons that are classified as a secondary CTA in WooCommerce will be colored appropriately for our color scheme that we've set up, okay?
So now uh, we also have our button radius set to four, whereas we've established a, a border radius of five on other elements. So let's set the button radius to five, which will make those more consistent. And subtle things like one pixel of difference in the border radius between elements can make a difference as to whether your design looks polished and professional or on the edge of amateur. Uh, sometimes the things really are unnoticeable unless you're looking for them, but something in your brain picks up the inconsistencies and can really impact the perception of your design. So now let's go into links. And right now these links are actually the standard blue color. We're gonna change these to our dark green. And then on hover, we'll change them to our light green, which is actually oddly similar to the default. <laughs> That's okay. Um, let's go down, let's look. It's starting to look like a custom shop, which is the goal. Um, let's look and see if there's any other global styles we can adjust at this point. So we can jump into inputs here, uh, which will adjust the sorting select uh, at the top right of the products list. And the only thing I really want to change is the border color because I don't like really dark borders. So let's go with a really, really light gray border, uh, just barely enough to add some emphasis. Um, a lot of times when you reduce the contrast of your borders, it does make things look a little cleaner. And it's nice to avoid borders altogether if you can. Let's also adjust the uh, border radius here to be five pixels so that it matches the rest of our elements that have rounded corners. And I think that's it for the input styles. So let's see if there's anything else here. I don't think there's anything else we want to adjust right this minute. So let's save this and then jump to the front end and look at what we have going on. So we have our big headline here, you know, talking about what we're selling, a little subheading describing the thing. And then if we scroll down, we have our products. Now that's as far as we're gonna go in this video because we really just wanted to cover setting up the shop archive in Oxygen with Oxygen's WooCommerce integration. In subsequent videos, we'll be going over the individual product design, the checkout page, the cart page, all that good stuff. So that's how to set up a shop page in Oxygen using Oxygen's WooCommerce integration. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and thank you very much for watching.